Hey guys, it's me again. We are going to be doing a Q&A video, so I'll be answering any questions that you asked in last week's video, and also questions that you asked me over on Instagram, so don't forget to follow me there if you aren't already. And also subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you get notified when we post a video. So you guys asked me some really great questions, and I'm really sorry in advance if I butcher any of your names. I'll start with this question first, since it's related to the cage setup video from last week. Peter Giske asked, how how did you make the perch at the bottom of the biggest cage? I would like to make one myself. Thanks for all the inspiration and ideas. Peter, thank you so much for watching our videos and thanks so much for this question as well. Peter is referring to this perch that I have, which I actually didn't make. I got this perch from Amazon for about 16 bucks, which I will link in the comment section below if you want to get this for your bird's cage. I would definitely make perches if I had all the tools that I needed and if I could tell trees apart from each other so that I know which one ones are safe for my birds, but I don't know how to do that. I went ahead and just took the pieces apart so you can see which parts that you would need to make. This perch is essentially just a large perch in the middle with four smaller pieces attached all around it. So when it's screwed on, it's kind of like a set of perches that your birds can walk up. And the cool thing about this perch is you can have it the way I have it, which is attached to the bottom of the cage, or you can also attach it to the top of your bird's cage. Ruby 2020 are asked, are green cheeks good beginner pets? This is a tough one and also a very great question. Personally, I don't think there is a good beginner pet or a good beginner bird. And I know some people say that there are certain birds that are good beginner pets or good beginner birds, but to say that there is a good beginner bird kind of gives it that notion that they'll be easier to care for and that they won't need as much maintenance, but every pet has specific needs that will need some tending to. And some pets will need more tending to than others like birds. Pets in general are a huge responsibility whether it's fish or birds and birds are hard pets to begin with because not a lot of people can tolerate noise or messes or biting especially and everything else that comes with parrot ownership. That's why so many birds are given up and are tossed from home to home because birds are just difficult to have. I will say that if you are a thousand percent committed to caring for a bird especially if you are a new bird owner and you know that you'll do everything you can to provide for your bird, then green cheeks or any other bird would be a great companion for you. Nayla Albu Flasa asked, how old are your parrots? So pineapple and pumpkin were both born in 2016. Pineapple's birthday is March 14th and pumpkin's birthday is November 19th. So pumpkin just turned four last month and pineapple is turning five in a few months. And I can't believe how fast time flies because it just seems like yesterday I was just teaching them how to spin and transitioning over from a seed diet to a pellet diet and yeah slow it down i can't believe it's going by so fast yeah. my a asked can you show what a typical day of eating for your birds look like so this is what my birds daily diet looks like we've got a cube of chop each pellets that i always have available for them on the play gym and in their cages to eat and water that i have to change each time they eat pellets because they really enjoy dipping their pellets and that just makes the water really gross right after cage Occasionally, I say about a few times a week, I'll give them fruit to eat like a blueberry each or a few bites from my banana before I eat it or some mango. And for training sessions, they'll either get some safflower seeds or millets. And for treats, they'll get a Nutriberry each. For dinner, I'll give them some more veggies. So it could either be some more chop or baby bell peppers or peas. Maya A also asked, how do you build trust with a new bird? Very great question. And this is something that I've been asked a couple times, so I will definitely make a video on this in the future maybe if i get a new bird but we'll see but since you just got your bird it will need some time adjusting to the new environment so you need to give it some space for the first few days and during that time you can spend some time around its cage doing what you normally do throughout the day and just be near it so it can get used to your presence as well you can also feed it some treats through the cage bars so it can get used to being fed and associate your hands with good things like treats and and then you can eventually work your way to leaving the cage door opened and feed some treats 
through the door and also giving it the chance to come out when it's ready to. And then you can start training them. And the really important thing is to be aware of your bird's body language so that it will tell you when it's comfortable interacting with you and always move at your bird's pace. Some birds will take longer to trust you and others will take to you right away. Just be patient and you guys will bond in no time and make sure you never force your bird to do things that it doesn't want to do. Ella Lackey asked, is a female or male? So both of my birds are female and I got them DNA sexed at my avian vet when I got them. So you'll need to do that if your birds aren't sexually dimorphic or if you can't tell your bird's gender just by looking at its physical characteristics. Now you definitely don't have to get your birds DNA sexed if you only have one bird and you don't mind not knowing what their gender is, but it doesn't hurt to know if your birds are female just so you can prepare yourselves if they do lay eggs in the future. And it would also be helpful if you plan on getting a second bird of the same species just so you would know if there would be a chance of your birds mating and if that's something that you don't want. All the Quay Tech Vlogs, thank you for watching my videos and always leaving a comment. You are the best. She asked, have pumpkin and pineapple ever shared a cage or have you thought about it? Pineapple and pumpkin have shared a cage in the very beginning when they were just starting to get along, but now they're only in the same cage when it's time to sleep and they stay in separate cages during the day when we have to run errands or walk Ava. We leave them in their own cages when we're out because even though pumpkin loves pineapple, she can still be a jerk at times. So we just keep them in their own cages just to be safe so they can still see each other and be in each other's presence and be safe in their own space. Short Kid asked, how do I treat my molting burp? Very great question. When birds molt, they can be really irritable and nippy. So the best thing you can do is offer more baths. So it helps clean their feathers and skin and also helps soften up their pin feathers, which would be really irritating to them at this time. If your bird allows it, you can also help preen the pin feathers on their head since they would normally need help with those feathers and only preen them if the feathers don't have blood in them in just the white casing. So the way to preen your bird's feathers is to just use your fingernails and really gently just rub it against the white casing on your bird's pin feathers and that will help remove the white casing so the new feather is exposed. You also want to make sure that your birds are getting extra toys to play with and that they get enough sleep which is usually 10 to 12 hours of uninterrupted sleep. And also make sure that your bird is on a healthy diet just so that their feathers can grow out nice and healthy. Nayla07 asked, how do you clean your bird's cage? So my birds don't spend much time in their cages and they're out about 98% of the time so I don't need to clean it that often. I'll do a paper change every week and also dust down the cage with a rag and then spray some water mixed with a little bit of apple cider vinegar to clean the cage bars and every few weeks or every month I'll do a deep clean where I'll take the cage apart and clean the trays and bridges. I'll either use mild dish soap or my Dr. Bronner's unscented Castile soap to wash the trays and rinse a couple times with some really really hot water and for the perches I'll rinse and scrub with really hot water first to get rid of dried on pellets or poop and then I'll spray it with my water and apple cider vinegar mixture scrub a bit again and rinse and then wait for it to dry. Let me know if you want a full video on how I clean their cages. Safe World 15 asked, do you want to free fly your birds? Yes, this is something I would love to do in the future. I would want to teach them whenever I get my own house and have backyard space with netting to do so. That way they are in a safe environment. Right now, I don't trust myself to bring them to an outdoor space and teach them because I'm not experienced with free flying and I would hate myself if I did that and they flew away and I would never see them again. They've always had the space in my apartment to fly around all day, all they'd like, and I can't wait until they get the chance to free fly because it's going to be a different experience with the wind in their wings and everything. Thank you guys so much for all the great questions. It was really fun answering them for you. So I can't believe it, but we are already at just over 500 subscribers. Like what? Like this video and comment down below if you guys would love for me to do a giveaway at some point. Maybe when we reach a thousand subscribers. Comment down below and let me know what you would like as a part of the future maybe giveaway. As always, thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Peace.